Hi, my name is Bokhadar Ahmedov. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about the inverse matrices and an algorithm of finding them. So let's first of all define what is the inverse of a matrix. So if you are given a square matrix, A is going to be a square matrix, which means that the number of the rows is equal to the number of the columns. So essentially it might be 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 matrix. If there exists the inverse matrix, then the multiplication of this matrix to this A should be equal to the identity. Okay, so in this case, we call this B as the inverse of the E. So B is going to be called as the inverse of an A, and we're going to denote this as the A in the power of minus one. So essentially, it's not the reciprocal of the A, so this is the inverse of the A. And again, the definition of the inverse is that the multiplication of these two matrices should be equal to the identity matrix. So there are lots of essential things which we need to discuss about the inverse matrices, like why we actually need the inverse matrices, what are the applications of the inverse matrices, and a couple of theorems about the existence of the inverse matrices. But today we are going to discuss about the algorithm of finding them. So we are going to assume that you know, you have already checked that the matrix is invertible, and now we would like to go and find the inverse. So before we do that, I would like to solve a system of linear equations, and you will see in a moment why we actually need a system of linear equations to find the inverse of the matrices. So let's say you've got a matrix. So let's say I've got a system of linear equations. So the x1 plus 2x2 is equal to the 1, 2x2 plus 5, sorry, 2x1, 2x1 plus 5, plus 5x2 is equal to the 0. So I need to solve this system of linear equations. So we've learned so far that we can solve this using so-called Gauss-Jordan elimination, right? So in order to do this, we need to write this system into the matrix form. So essentially, I'm going to copy the coefficients of the Left hand side to one matrix is going to be 1, 2, 2, 5. So this should be multiplied to some vector with the components x1 and x2. So please note that x1 and x2 are just the constants, right? So they are scalars, not the vectors. And this is equal to the 1 and 0. Okay, so this becomes in the form of a times to the x vector is equal to some vector b. And in order to find a solution for this system, so essentially in order to find this vector x, we need to use the gauss jordan elimination. So you, we are going to put both of the, so we are going to create the augmented matrix. So the augmented matrix is going to be 1, 2, 2, 5. Then essentially I'm going to just copy here 1 and 0. Okay. And if you bring this matrix to the reduced row echelon form, so by essentially by eliminating this 2 and this 2, what you will get is actually, so let, let me write this. So what you need to do is you need to multiply the first row to the minus 2 and add this to the second. What you obtain is 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, uh, minus 2. Okay, then we need to get rid of this, this 2 and in order to do this we need to multiply the second row to the minus 2 and add this to the first one. If we do this, what you get is actually is going to be 0, 1, minus 2. I'm just going to copy the second row as it is. And the first row is going to be 1, 0. The minus 2 times the minus 2 is going to be plus 4. Plus 1 is going to be equal to the 5. OK, you see, say, this, this matrix, actually, the reduced row echelon form, uh, I, I've got this identity matrix here. And just right after the identity matrix, I've got the vector which is going to be the solution for the system. Essentially, this vector x is equal to this vector, 5 and 2. So essentially, x vector is equal to the 5 and 2, which will satisfy the system of linear equations. So there is a reason why I showed you the algorithm of finding the solution of the system of linear equations in this way. Uh, we need this in order to find the columns of the inverse matrices. So again, let me write down the equation of the inverse matrix. So again, we say that, hey, the inverse matrix is going to be such a matrix so that if I multiply this to the original matrix A, it is going to be equal to the identity, right? So in order to find the inverse 
a in the power of minus one of this matrix, what I would like to do is I would like to find this column by column. So let's let's do this an example of the two by two matrix. So let's say hey the a is two by two matrix. Then its inverse is also going to be two by two matrix. Okay, and if I multiply two by two matrix, the, the another two by two matrix, the identity matrix is also going to be two by two matrix. So essentially, the inverse matrix has the two columns, and I would like to find the inverse matrix column by column. I would like to find the first column of the inverse matrix and the second column of the inverse matrix. So in order to do this, I would like to m m multiply them. So essentially, I'm given already the A, right? I'm looking for this matrix, A inverse. So if I would just multiply this A to the inverse, then I could multiply this in this way. So the A matrix is multiplied to the two columns of this matrix. And in one of the previous videos, we've, decided, we, we, we've learned about the multiplication of the matrix to another matrix as the linear combination of the columns of the first one. So essentially, you can multiply this matrix to every column. So essentially, this matrix is coming inside this matrix, the second matrix, okay? So this A is coming inside here. So you can multiply this as AX1 and AX2. Okay, so this is going to be the two columns of the resulting matrix when you multiply the two matrices. And this matrix at the same time should be equal to the identity matrix, which is two by two identity matrix, which is like a one zero zero one matrix, right? So this is again, say the multiplication of the A to the inverse, and this is the identity, and they should be equal. So the two matrices are equal if all of the corresponding elements are equal. Or essentially, if the two matrices are equal, it means that the corresponding columns are equal. So essentially, the first column of this matrix should be equal to, with the first column of this matrix on the right-hand side part. And the second column of the matrix on the left-hand side part should be equal with the second column of the matrix on the right-hand side part. So I'm going to equalize them and in, order to, uh, in order to get kind of a system or kind of an equation to find those vectors x1 and x2. So they are the columns of the inverse matrix. So if I do just equalize them, I would just get two system of linear equations. So if you remember, so AX is equal to some vector is a system of linear equation. So I need to solve the first system of linear equations in order to find the first column of the inverse matrix X1. And I need to solve the second system of linear equations in order to find the second column of the inverse matrix. Okay, so fortunately for us, we can, uh, so we've seen before how we can find the inverse, of, uh, how we can solve the system of linear equations using the Gauss-Jordan elimination, right? So what you need to do is, you need to do the Gauss-Jordan elimination here in order to find this vector. You can just apply the Gauss-Jordan elimination here in order to find the x2. But it appears it is possible to just make the Gauss-Jordan elimination only one to solve all of the system of linear equations, to solve multiple system of linear equations. And the idea is going to be like this. So what I need to do is I need to copy this matrix A, okay? And just right after this matrix A, I need to copy those columns from the system, the right and side part columns from the system. So this is going to be this matrix and, and this vector and this vector should be copied just after the matrix A. Right. So if you remember previously, when we created the augmented matrices, we put the matrix A, then just after that, we put the matrix, the vector B. So now I'm going to put multiple vectors B just after the matrix A. So essentially, I'm going to put 1, 0, and 0, 1. So essentially 1, 0, and 0, 1, which is the identity matrix. And if the matrix A is invertible, the reduced rational form of this big augmented matrix is going to be in this way. So this is going to be the identity matrix here. So 1, 0, 0, 1. And we can bring this to this form by just performing the Gauss-Jordan elimination. And the matrix which you're going to have here, the 2 by 2 matrix, is going to be essentially the inverse of this matrix. OK? So let me explain you this idea on an example. So let's say you are given a matrix A with the entries 1, 2, 2, 5. And you need to find its inverse. Okay? So what you say, hey, I don't know what is the inverse, but I can find the columns of the inverse matrix. A inverse is going to be the matrix with the two columns. So x1 column and x2 column. Okay? And I know that if I would just multiply the whole matrix A 
one, two, two, five. Two is the first column, so essentially x1 bar. This should be equal to the first column of the identity matrix, essentially one, zero. I also know that if I would just multiply this matrix, one, two, two, five, to the second column of this matrix, what I would get is the second column of the identity matrix, right? You see, so I've got the system, like AX1 is equal to the B1, AX2 is equal to the B2. And what, what I would like to do is I would like to solve this two system of linear equations at the same time by just performing the gauss jordan elimination only once. So in order to do this, let me just copy and create the big augmented matrix. So I'm going to put the one, two, two, five. And just right after this, I'm going to copy the right hand side parts of the system of linear equations. For the first system of linear equations, it is just one and zero. For the second one is zero and one. And this matrix should be brought to the reduced row echelon form. And again, if you remember, so you need to choose the pivot of the leading one from the first row and eliminate everything below them. So this is going to be the two in this case. In order to do this, you need to multiply the first row to the minus one and add this to the second. Okay, so let's see what you get. So it is going to be, I'm going to copy the first row as it is. One, two, one, and zero. And the second row is going to be changed in the following way. So I'm going to multiply all of the entries, all of the entries in the first row to the minus two and add them to the second. It is going to be zero here, one, minus two, and one. Okay, so in the next step, I need to get rid of this element, right? because now I've got the boss of the leading ones and the boss of the rows, the everything below them are zero. Now I have to make them everything above to be equal to zero. So in order to eliminate this two, we need to multiply the second row now to the minus two and add this to the first row. And again, by doing this operation, the first second row is not going to change. So it's going to be zero, one, minus two and one. Now I have to multiply all of the entries on the second row to the minus two and add them to the first row, right? So this is going to be a one, zero. So minus two times to the minus two is going to be a plus four, plus one is going to be five. Minus one times to the minus two, plus zero, it's going to be minus two actually, okay? So this matrix is already in the reduced row echelon form. And this column, just after the identity matrix, is going to give you the solution for this system. So it's going to give you the x1. And the second column of this matrix, this column, minus t and 1, is going to give you the solution for the system, essentially x2. So I found the first column and the second column of the inverse matrix by just solving two system of linear equations. So if you would just generalize this idea, so in order to find the inverse of the 3x3 three three matrix or 4x4 four four matrix, you need to solve multiple system of linear equations, and you can do this using the gauss jordan elimination. So one thing which I would like to do now is to check whether I found the correct inverse matrix. In order to do this, I'm going to multiply this matrix to my original matrix and check whether this is the identity or not. So let's do this together. So I've got the matrix A with the entries 1, 2, 2, 5. And this should be multiplied to this matrix 5 minus 2 minus 2 and 1. Okay. Now let's do this multiplication row by column. So essentially the first row is going to be multiplied to the first column. If you multiply this, what you get? 1 times is a 5, 2 times is a minus 2, which is going to be equal to the 1. The first row is going to be multiplied to the second column. That is going to be minus 2 plus 2, which is going to be 0. Now I need to multiply the second row to the first column. It is going to be 2 times is a 5, which is 10 plus 5 to the minus 2, it's going to be minus 10, this is equal to the 0. And the second row to the second column, it's going to be minus 4 plus 5, it's going to be equal to the 1. Well, this is identity, it means that this is the inverse of the original matrix we found, and this inverse is unique. So essentially, every square matrix has a unique inverse matrix. So let me like uh, write down the general algorithm one more time. So if you would like to figure out the uh, inverse of the n by n matrix, so let me show you. J just j let me just put the n there, so it will show you the number of the rows and columns of this matrix. So you need to create the augmented matrix, 
And just after your matrix, you need to put the identity matrix of the same dimensionality. So if, for example, your matrix is five by five, then you're going to put just the five by five identity matrix. Then apply the Gauss-Jordan elimination, okay? So then bring your matrix into this form. So the identity matrix is going to be here. And the matrix which you will get just after the identity matrix is going to be the inverse of your original matrix. So this is the general algorithm of finding the inverses. And again, we are assuming for all of these cases which we've discussed now that the matrix is invertible. So in our next video lectures, we're going to discuss the essential questions like uh, how to check whether the matrix is invertible, what are the applications of the inverse matrices, and so on. Thank you very much for your attention.